गुड इवनिंग स्टूडेंट्स गुड इवनिंग एवरीबडी गणपति गुड गुड इवनिंग गुड इंस्ट्रक्शन फातिमा गुड इवनिंग आशीष आशीष राकेश सिंह गुड इवनिंग बच्चे प्रिय दर्शनी गुड इवनिंग बच्चे देन देर इज देर इज देर इज पूर्णानी अश्विनी ओ माई गॉड इट्स अ वेरी लॉन्ग नेम इट्स अ वेरी लॉन्ग नेम ओके आई एम गुड बच्चे अब्दुल थैंक यू अब्दुल दैट सच ए लवली थिंग टू से हैरियट गुड इवनिंग मोनी हाय बच्चे मधु हाय प्रिया हाउ वे यू रवनीत सो वी आर इन इन ट्वेल्थ स्टैंडर्ड नाउ Pranav, a very good evening. Madhu, then Murugam, Oviya, Murugam. Hi, bache. Shweta, good evening. Ansiba, Shri Gauri, and where uh, so many hearts coming? Rohan, good evening. Rohan, how are you? Aditi, Ishan, Dinesh. Karin, Mino, Mayuri, Spectre. Oh my God! All my children are ready today. Okay, now let's see. Yes, yes, yes. So we are starting. We are starting with twelfth. Sorry, this is twelfth. What do you see this? What is written there? Is it eleventh or twelfth? It's twelfth. It's twelfth. Okay. Human human reproduction, class twelfth, male reproductive system is the first topic you are going to be doing with Ritu Ma'am. N C R T book out, N C R T twelfth standard book out. Got that right, which is so all those eleven standard students you got promoted now without exam you got promoted. This is Karen. I am good, Rohan. Harriet, what's your bottle? Lency RT book, notebook ready, ma'am. With you, thank you, thank you so much. Keep Lency RT book. This chapter in front of you, human reproduction. Okay, in front of you. Let's talk something very important, and then I was so lazy before coming for this lecture. And look at those hearts, and look at those loving messages. full of energy completely full of energy we can study all night all night we can study tell mama you don't want dinner tell dad to stay away from you tell everybody to stay away it's ritu ma'am's time with you just you and ritu ma'am nobody else i'm your best friend okay so now before i start talking about human reproduction okay Let's talk something important about the students who are appearing for NEET 2021. So NEET 2021 crash course, right? Covers entire NEET main syllabus in one twenty session with India's best teachers. The best faculty is available. Solves unlimited doubts from eight a.m. to eleven p.m. All day, teachers are there. To solve your doubts, right? Ten full and ten part syllabus test. Because as Ritu Ma'am says, what? You don't study without testing. You don't study. Okay, amazing tricks and tips in ninety minute sessions. One and a half hours power packed sessions for you all, right? Learn on a two way interactive platform where teacher is always with you. So now students. Who are appearing for twenty twenty one need exam? What are you supposed to do? You are supposed to download the Vedantu app, click on the need crash course, right? Then click on the coupon code. And what's the coupon code you are going to be using? R G C C is the coupon code you are going to be using, and you get thirty percent discount on this. And this crash course, which it starts from third of May. the link is available in the description below enroll now did you like the session or did you love the session did you like it did you love it okay you have no other choice like the session share it with your friends so that you can, your friends can also benefit 
and let us all be together and also please subscribe if anybody is new there and who is not subscribed please subscribe to this okay let's start look at that human reproduction what is this happening give me one word for it haploid sperm haploid egg what is this happening tell me wow tell me what is this happening give me one word for it fusion madhu is saying fusion priyadarshini is saying fertilization ishan tanisha rakesh shweta fatima oviya lakshmi priya Mayuri, thank you, darling. Okay, 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 okay. But that was not my question. Sorry, that was not my question. My question is different. Everybody listening, listen to this. What is this happening? Of course, it is what. fertilization trying to happen of course i know it that's a lollipop thing no that is not my question my question is this okay in every ejaculate during the sexual intercourse a male releases 300 million sperms is everybody listening carefully listen to the question coming okay then don't say you did not understand the question every ejaculate during the sexual intercourse insemination release of sperms in the vagina how many sperms does a male release 300 million important figure na huh? it's your ncrt figure 300 million sperms he releases out of these 300 million sperms now this is the question out of these 300 million sperms how many sperms get close to the egg out of these 300 million sperms how many sperms get close to the egg answer answer la pintura only one ananda one rakesh one only one over oh, a few thousand yes dinesh right money no i am not ans uh, this answer i am not uh, i am just reading Mayuri is saying four. <laughs> what is this four number? Mayuri, what is a four? <laughs> okay, one, one. Most of you, Aditi, <laughs> sperm is flirting with, flirting with ovary. Okay, now <laughs> most of you. Mayuri ma baba how did you how did you how did you think of four and all of you all of you i can see the chat going hey why one 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 what one what did i ask now did, that, that's what i told you listen to ritu ma'am's question carefully i said out of these three Hundred million sperms. How many get close to the egg? I did not ask you how many fertilize it. One answer from almost ninety ninety percent of the students have given one answer wrong. How do you sometimes unanimously go wrong? The whole team unanimously everybody because you don't hear it to map. you just start answering even before understanding what is the question i said how many get close to the egg 
I did not ask you how many fertilize. Of course, fertilize only one. Only one. Only one is going to fertilize. Only, of course, only one is going to fertilize. Out of 300 million sperms, around 100 of them, it's around 100 of them, get close to the egg. And out of those, one, one successfully fertilizes the egg. This is this. Okay, so no, I was, I was just trying to trick you and I tricked you into that. It was just, you did not hear my sentence properly. So, okay, but with this, I've actually given you a very interesting fact. 300 million sperms are released in the inseminate, in the ejaculate. Okay, now, and yes, around 100 get close to it and one gets to fertilize. Okay, now, look at that. Humans are sexually reproducing organisms. And we are viviparous. We are viviparous. What does... Oh, <laughs> okay, I like it when you are holding your ear like that. Okay, and do <laughs> This is so cute. Okay, so okay, agreed. Okay, agreed. All right. And the strangest part was Mayur is saying four. Okay. <laughs> okay, now let's see. Look at that. How beautiful life is. How beautiful life is. Okay, we are Vivi Paris. It's in your chapter, second line. In this chapter, second line. Vivi Paris is there. Underline it. What does Vivi Paris mean? Vivi Paris means producing young ones. Producing young ones. And what is the other case scenario? Ovi Paris. Ovi Paris means, Ovi Paris is laying eggs like birds like reptiles, okay, they are oviparous. Then there is a category which is in between oviparous and ovoviviparous, okay. There is, see, we are viviparous. Come on. Okay, we are viviparous. Viviparous means producing young ones. Like see this. That's viviparous. Another category is bache, that's called as oviparous. Oviparous means the animals which are eggling. Got that right? Eggling means birds and reptiles. Okay. Then there is a third category which is called as, okay, sorry, which is called as ovo viviparous. Ovo viviparous. They are, for example, sharks are those. They are in between oviparous and viviparous. Okay, they in this case, the embryo develops in the egg in mother. Okay, embryo develops in the egg in the mother. But there is no placental con connect. No placental connect. There is no placental connect. And they produce the young one. The difference is, see, it is like oviparous because the embryo is developing in the egg. When embryo is developing in the egg, it is like oviparous. But they produce young ones. They produce young ones like viviparous. So why don't we put them in viviparous category? Because in us, in viviparous, we have placenta connecting mother and the fetus. And all the exchange 
nutrients, excretory waste, all those hormones, antibodies, all those exchange takes place via that placenta. There is no placental connect. There is no placental connect in ovoviviparous. That's why they are different than us. Viviparous. Got that right? And write down the example also. Sharks. Where viviparous is written in your book. Most of you students don't understand ovoviviparous. It is a combination. It's kind of something common between oviparous and viviparous. Okay. Embryo developing in egg. In the female body. Okay. But it has no placental connect. That egg hatches in mama's body only. Egg hatches also in mother's body. And the young ones are delivered. The main thing is no placental connect is there. Did you get it right? So these are the three categories. But anyhow, we are Vivi Paris organism. Shahid, how are you? Banu sharks, yes. Okay, now look at that, how beautiful. Reproductive events. This is the first paragraph of your NCRT book, this chapter. But oh my God, look at that, how beautifully successful. Okay, now that's an egg. That's an egg. Okay, this is again fertilization tending to happen. These are very slow. No, 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 nothing will happen. Okay, now what are the different events? What are the different events happening in the reproduction? Now, some of the events are here. Gametogenesis. I'm going to explain each of them briefly. What is required right now? All the detailing is happening in the chapter. Gametogenesis, insemination, fertilization, implantation, gestation and parturition. Let's do them one by one. Okay, first let's talk about gametogenesis. What is gametogenesis? Gametogenesis is production of gametes. Okay, gametogenesis formation of gametes. What are gametes? Sex cells. What is a gamete? Sex cells. What is a gamete in male? Sperm. What is a gamete in female? It's ova. Remember, but if you're talking about one egg, don't say ova. Say ovum. Ovum is singular. Okay, so ova is plural. So gametogenesis, formation of gametes. Sperms in the male and ova. Let's do plural. In the females. Okay, sperm formed, egg formed. Now insemination. What is insemination? Transfer of sperms into the female genital tract. Okay, that's called insemination. I'm going to be giving you another word. So don't confuse these two words. You have right now your insemination. <clears throat> what is insemination? Release of sperm in the woman's body, in the vagina. Okay, that is insemination. There is another word called is ejaculation. Okay, ejaculation is release of sperms outside the male body, not in the female genital tract, not in the female vagina. Ejaculation is the, sorry, sorry, Uchar. okay, ejaculation is the release of sperm outside the male's body. That's ejaculation. But when the release of sperm is in the vagina, that's called as insemination. Got that right? Then, this happens during sexual intercourse for which the word which we will be using can be coitus. Coitus means sexual intercourse. Okay. Third, fertilization. We saw such beautiful images. Okay. Fusion of male and female gibbet to form zygote. Okay, you know, you celebrate your birthday, you celebrate your birthday, the day you are born, you come out of mama's womb 
in this world. But actually, your life began then. Your life actually started then. Zygote. Okay. So now let's see. Next. Implantation. Okay. What is implantation? Implantation is like, I'm talking uh, like embryo and fetus as your kind of a generation. When you as an uh, embryo fix in mama's uterus, fix in mama's uterus to get nutrition, to get oxygen, to get all good things for mama, from mama. Okay, that fixing of the embryo in the uterine wall is called as implantation. And at that time, the embryo is at a stage which we call as blastocyst. I'll be teaching you all of this. I'll be teaching you blastocyst, morula, gastrula, everything. Right now, you just need to remember one thing. That when the implantation happens, when the implantation happens, you as an embryo are at what stage? Blastocyst. This is around 100 cells big. Blastocyst is around 100 cells. 100, 120 cells like that. Okay. Development of blastocyst and its attachment to the uterine wall. That's called as implantation. All right gestation period what is gestation period how long is the fetus developing in mama's womb how long nine months that's gestation period that is gestation period we always say it which it gestation period is a developmental period okay this is nine months or 280 days Note it down. Human gestation period. 9 months, 280 days or 40 weeks. Noting it down all of you in NCRT book. All of you note it down. Okay. Copulation is same thing, but check coitus. Copulation is sexual intercourse, same thing. No menti today, Sabu. Riti, Riti, ba, blastocyst. But check, you right now, you just be my smart children and just remember that the stage when you fixed in mama's uterus, that embryo stage is called as blastocyst. I'm going to be doing details of it. Don't worry about it. Right now, it's just very brief. You are going to be doing a lot of details with me. All right. It's a very easy chapter. It's a fun chapter. And it is high weightage chapter. It, human reproduction and reproductive health together can have up to five MCQs in need. So you be very careful. I'm going to explain everything to you. So right now, Vache, need to remember that blastocyst stage is a stage of embryo when the embryo fixes in mama's uterus. That's it. Don't worry about I'm going to be doing everything in details. Okay. Gestation, did you note it down? Gestation is the developmental period. When a fetus develops in mama's womb, how long? Nine months. Tell me in days. 280 days. Tell me in weeks. 40 weeks. Did you get it right? You know what is the gestation period of elephant? 22 months. An elephant's gestation period is almost two years. Mama is carrying the fetus for two years. Two years. 22 months is elephant's gestation period. Anyhow, moving ahead. Parturition. Parturition is delivery of the baby. Baby birth, that's parturition. Parturition is delivery of the fetus. Okay, now let's see. These are the reproductive events. Now, I'm talk, I, I want to talk about something. 
okay all of you with me now when okay see this okay i'm going to be taking it up uh, in a short while where do i write okay see this hold on <clears throat> okay reproductive events occur after puberty there are remarkable differences between the reproductive events in male and female that okay now see this bachcha you are going to you going to understand it this way when the when uh, okay when do i write <clears throat> sperm fertilizes an egg a sperm fertilizes an egg what does it form it forms a zygote it forms a zygote okay now zygote starts multiplying into two cell then four cell so on what do you call this after zygote what do you call it what do you call this developing thing you call it embryo what do you call it embryo so zygote after zygote what do you start calling it embryo till when do you call it embryo till the end of second month of gestation gestation pregnancy period till the end of second month or you can say till the end of eighth week same thing till the end of eighth week or till the end of second month you call it what embryo then you change the name what do we call it we call it fetus after that you call it what fetus why did we change the name from embryo to fetus because by the end of second month by the end of second month almost all your organs are formed you start developing limbs arms and legs you're small you're this big you're just this big and but all your organs are formed in miniature form so we change your name and you start taking human form you start developing limbs limb buds start forming okay and we change your name to fetus so are you getting it right when till when will we call you fetus till parturition till the delivery we call you what fetus okay so let's see zygote sperm egg what is form zygote after zygote once it starts multiplying what do we call it embryo zygote is single cell after that we start calling it what embryo till when do you call it embryo till the end of second month then after that second month you how much is the total 9 months so end of the second month you change the name what are you all call the same thing fetus till when till the delivery of the fetus okay so that is this bachche there are remarkable differences between reproductive events now we are starting with the male reproductive system that's the male reproductive system keep your book in front of you the diagrams given in the book we are going to be taking care of those completely okay now let's see male reproductive system is present in the pelvic region but testis is present outside the abdomen x we call them extra abdominal testis extra abdominal we'll talk about it and male reproductive system includes the primary sex organs or reproductive organs are testis why do we call this structure testis as primary reproductive organ because the structure which produces gametes are called as primary reproductive organs got that right which then 
it's got accessory ducts we are going to be talking about those ducts okay it's got glands it's got three different types of glands we are going to be studying those three different types of glands today itself okay then it's got the external genitalia which is penis and testis okay we are going to be talking about all of that now this is the image in your book right this is the image in your book keep it in front of you we are going to be studying this image this is the front view we also have in your book lateral view lateral view is also there we will study both <clears throat> okay now let's see bachche let's start with the primary reproductive organ what are the primary reproductive organ testes each and every label is going to be clear to you okay so the primary reproductive organs are testes okay here internal structure is given here external structure is given now see this bachche right on top of testes you can see this c shape comma shape structure right on top of the testes there is a c shape or comma shape you can see this one this one okay a c shape or comma shape structure that's called as epididymis right now just learn the names you will understand all of them very well with me right now just learning the names okay so there is testis and the c shape comma shape structure this one here this one okay what are you going to say what is the position posterior laterally posterior laterally okay this is called as epididymis right now watch this bachche right from the bottom of the epididymis see this right from the bottom of the epididymis rises a tubular structure what are the see this here from the bottom of the epididymis rises a structure what is that called as vas deferens plural is vasa differentia okay this is this vas deferens now let's move ahead okay vas deferens vas deferens from here and you see both the sides okay it loops over the ureter it goes over the ureter okay it see it loops over the ureter this this is ureter this is ureter so the vasa differentia they loop over the ureter and you know if this these are ureters what is this structure urinary bladder right coming back to the vas the vas difference vas difference loops over the ureter and and look at this bachche it dilates there is a dilation whenever a tube dilates we use a word for that what is that word it's not written there not possible okay not written this is called as you can write it there ampulla the dilation in the vas deferens is called as say that what is that called as ampulla see on both the sides vasa differentia they dilate like see the tube is there then it dilates that dilation it becomes broad is called as what ampulla did you write it there ampulla if it is not there in the book okay now tell me bachche why should there be dilation if a tube if a tube is like this and then it becomes broad what is the role storage temporary for a short while storage of sperms for a short while because something is happening ahead of that what is happening ahead of that something is mixing along with the sperm okay now watch this the vas deferens see this vas deferens dilates it dilates and it joins the duct of a gland there is this gland 
you can see there is this gland lobulated kind of gland what are these glands seminal vesicle so vast difference joins the seminal vesicle duct it is like this i'll show you what i've drawn there vast difference dilates and then vast difference joins the it joins the duct of the seminal vesicle like this this is a seminal vesicle okay and this is this is the vast difference and what is the dilated portion called as ampulla okay then further when they join they form a common a common duct a common duct they form what is that common duct called as that's called as it's not there ejaculatory duct ejaculatory duct they form a common duct that common duct is called as ejaculatory duct are we getting it right which is okay then ejaculatory ducts from both the sides from both the sides ejaculatory duct pierces a heart shaped almost a heart shaped gland you can see this gland what is this heart shaped gland this heart shaped gland is called as prostate this heart shaped gland is called as prostate in fact you know something i say prostate is more heart shaped than heart also prostate is actually more heart shaped than actual heart okay so ejaculatory duct the blue ones they pierce into the prostate gland and open into this duct which is coming from the bladder what is this duct which is coming and extending all the way in the penis what is that urethra ejaculatory duct opens into urethra okay one more important thing here just check this bachcha okay you can see this small two p shaped glands okay opening in the bulbous region of urethra see what did i say opening in the bulbous region of urethra that's why they are called as bulbo urethral glands write another name for them okay bulbo urethral glands are also called as cowper's gland write down this in your figure bulbo urethral glands are also called as cowper's gland got that right bachcha okay so then watch this now that's urethra this is urethra urethra cut this is urethra continues into the male into the male copulatory structure which is called as penis okay i don't see anywhere written here bachche so i wrote it down there the urethra continues in the male reproductive copulatory organ male copulatory organ please please pronounce it correct it's not penis it's penis it's called penis you all are going to be talking to ritu ma'am understanding in every which way like medical students you promise me that all of you okay because these are the things i want my children to get the right pronunciation of every word start talking behaving acting like my very smart elite medical students is that a promise is that a promise okay so let's see this okay so urethra continues in the male copulatory organ penis at the tip of the penis watch this bachche 
at the tip of the penis at the tip of the penis there is a bulbous dilated kind of a region this enlarged portion at the tip of the penis is known as glans penis it's called as glans penis got that right which what is all of these what are these structures don't worry i am here to explain to you each and everything very clearly so don't worry right now all of you my children are learning the right words the right pronunciation and the right location of all these structures got that right bachche then another thing the glans penis glans penis is the most sensitive region in a male's body okay when i say any 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 structure if i say children this is very sensitive structure this is very sensitive tissue this is a very sensitive organ what does that mean that means it's got many 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 nerve endings what is nerve ending dendrites dendrites so it gets stimulated very fast very quickly okay it can trigger that stimulation so i'm saying glans penis is highly highly sensitive region that means it's got a lot of nerve endings okay that's why glans penis is covered by a loose fold of skin what is that loose fold of skin called for skin that fold of skin which covers the glans penis is called foreskin and foreskin is also called as prepuce write it down bachche foreskin is also called as prepuce yes abhishek right bachche shri thank you bachche harriet thank you those promises are so cute am am i went out if one ovary by three then one then once in two months yes abhishek you're so right pradarshini no i will have dinner after the lecture i'm going to do one thing bachche because i don't want to hurry up with this all i'm going to divide human male reproductive system into two parts today one part tomorrow the second part is that okay with you because i don't want to hurry up with everything i told you this is a high weightage chapter so ritu ma'am doesn't want to hurry up with this all right now is there any labeling which is left which my okay this is internal structure i'm going to be teaching you the internal structure also okay now a quick lidia thank you bachche gayatri thank you silo loads of love back to me zara yes i want water abila because i don't know today my today my throat is <coughs> is feeling little not right okay because why my throat is not right today is <coughs> because i had a glass full of iced tea today in the afternoon loads and loads of ice in it i shouldn't have had a teacher should not have ice a teacher should sacrifice ice but i had it because i it was so yummy it was so tasty so i had ice so that ice is not was not right and then since last 4 hours ritu ma'am is in lectures so because of all of that <clears throat> my throat is little bad okay now let's see no worry with my children i am perfectly fine now all of you bachche thank you i love those hearts i love your love for me okay thank you bachche thank you so much and <laughs> moni thank you for the corn mix <coughs> gale mein kich kich gale mein kich kich kya kare <coughs> we can make an advertisement now all of us together the teacher is saying gale mein kich kich kya kare and the, all the students start spamming with that 
No, <laughs> shall I let's do this. Okay, come on back to the system. Okay, now see this picture. I'm going to be talking about the internal structure also. This is the internal structure. I'm going to be talking about Vasa efferentia. I'm going to be talking about Rete testis. I'm also going to be talking about testicular lobules later. Later. Because I, j I will do the internal structure in details. Don't worry. I'm going to be teaching you each and every word which can be asked in neat exam. Have faith in Ritu ma'am. Okay. Let's have a quick recap of this. The male primary sex organs, a pair of testes. This is testes. This is testes. Right on top of testes, there is C-shape or comma-shaped structure. That C-shape or comma-shaped structure is called as epididymis. From the tail end of epididymis, from the tail end, tail end, bottom end, okay, of epididymis arises a tube here you can see this tube okay what are these tubes going up in the abdominal cavity called as they are called as vasa differentia plural vas difference is the singular now watch this bache vas difference loops over the ureter vas difference loops loops over the ureter and and dilates give me that word give me that word for the dilation give me that word when the vast difference dilates it's called as ampulla okay the main function of ampulla is to store temporarily ampulla right ampulla Okay, I'm going to be teaching you ampulla in the oviduct also. In female reproductive system also, in oviduct, oviduct is going to get dilated. I will be using the same word there also, bache. Okay, so in the tube, if dilation is there, we use the word ampulla for it. Okay, then let's move ahead. The vast difference, both the sides vast difference, they join with the duct of they join with the duct of what are, what are these two glands seminal vesicle vast difference joins with the duct of seminal vesicle to form a common duct what is this common duct called as this common duct is called as ejaculatory duct ejaculatory duct okay ejaculatory duct opens into this heart shaped gland it pierces ejaculatory duct pierces into a heart shape what is this heart shape single single seminal vesicle is a pair prostate is single prostate is single heart shape prostate gland okay then you also see there are these two small glands. What are they called? Bulbourethral glands. Do you remember the other name of bulbourethral glands? Cowper's gland. They are called as Cowper's gland. Okay. Now, you see ejaculatory duct opens into the urethra. Urethra. Okay. And urethra passes through penis. It's spelled as IS, but it is pronounced as penis. Okay, then open urethra opens at the tip of the penis. Write another word here. I did not give you that. This opening is called as urethral meters. Write down there, bache. The opening at the tip of the penis of urethra. The urethral opening at the tip of the penis is called as urethral meters. Okay. Another thing which I said was the tip of the penis is very said this anterior part. The anterior tip of the penis is highly sensitive. 
it's called as glans penis okay the sensitive region needs to be covered by a fold of skin that fold of skin is called as fore skin and fore skin has other name called as prepuce i hope you wrote it down it's also called as prepuce that's it okay these structures all these structures these three structures i'm going to be taking up when i'm doing the internal structure okay this is the side view okay this is the lateral view now look at the lateral view bache start identifying first from the primary sex organ where is testis this is the testis okay right on top of testis c shape or comma shape structure what is that c shape or comma shape structure called as where is the labeling man okay this is epididymis see this this is epididymis okay testis is present in a pouch which is called as scrotum now this was not there in the earlier diagram okay testis is present in a pouch like structure which is called as scrotum you see from the tail end of epididymis rises up this tube what is this tube called as vas different everybody are you seeing the diagram bache okay now i'm i'm giving you one extra thing here you can note it down in the diagram itself okay now see this vast difference is rising up okay from the scrotal sac into the abdomen there is a canal here there is a canal here this canal is known as inguinal canal inguinal there is a canal Th through that canal vast difference rises up in the abdomen okay this canal is called as inguinal canal this is one extra thing for you okay now moving ahead vast difference loops over the ureter okay and then vast difference swells up what is this dilation called as ampulla the dilation is called as ampulla then vast difference see this vast difference joins the duct of the seminal vesicle this is seminal vesicle seminal vesicle this in the red this is seminal vesicle vast difference joins the duct of the seminal vesicle to form a common duct what is this common duct called as ejaculatory duct ejaculatory duct pierces into this heart shaped gland what is this heart shaped gland prostate and also see at the base of the penis this two p like glands what are these two p like glands bulbo urethral glands or cowper's gland bulbo urethral gland or cowper's gland got that right bachche and see your the ejaculatory duct ejaculatory duct opens into the urethra i'm just i'm just i'm just sorry sorry okay the eja you see the ejaculatory duct it is joining the urethra what is this this is bladder okay this is bladder from the bladder is extending urethra this is urethra see this this is urethra so ejaculatory duct ejaculatory duct joins the urethra okay and urethra opens at the tip what is this tip called as write down there urethral meatus 
Okay, urethra passes through penis and the anterior part of the penis, glands penis, covered by the loose fold of skin called as foreskin. That's it. But see one more structure which is. This is the this is the large intestine. Behind, right behind. Large intestine. What is the last part of the large intestine? Rectum. And it opens into what? What is that aperture opening called as? Anus. Got that right? Let's talk about it. We'll just talk about testis today. Rest of it we are going to do tomorrow. Okay. Now testis. Situated. You can see the testis in the scrotum. Okay. Here I would like to give you another additional thing. Okay. We are talking about testis. Situated outside the abdomen, ca abdominal cavity within scrotum. Okay. The scrotum helps in lowering the temperature of testis why we want the temperature lower to first of all put important there okay 2 to 2.5 degrees centigrade lower than the normal body temperature why put a star here in your book put a star it's on the next page right in the top somewhere okay 2 to 2.5 degrees centigrade lower than the body temperature. Why? Because spermatogenesis needs that kind of temperature. So, spermatogenesis needs lower temperature. Okay. So, 2 to 2.5 degrees centigrade lower than the internal body temperature. That's why testes we say are extra abdominal. They are not present in the abdomen. They are present outside the abdomen. But you know what students? When a boy is in mama's womb. Okay. In the, um, by the end of first month or second month beginning. Testis starts forming. When testis starts forming. As in the embryo. It is forming close to the kidney in the abdominal region. Testis is formed close to the kidney in the abdominal region. But by the seventh month of pregnancy, are you all, will you all remember these smart things which I am telling you, which are not there in your NCRT book? By the end of seventh month of pregnancy, testis from close to kidney descends down outside in the scrotum then it becomes extra abdominal but remember testis when a baby boy is born testis is outside the body in the scrotum but testis was not formed outside testis is formed in the abdomen near the kidney in the lumbar region, lower back, lumbar region, near the kidneys. Then they descend down, which month did I say? By the end of 7th month of pregnancy. Okay, then lower scrotal temperature is necessary for spermatogenesis. Okay, now one more thing, bache. note it down, bache, all of you. Just at the, at the posterior right here okay there is a fibromuscular tissue fibromuscular means fibers and muscles fibers and muscles collagen fibers okay and muscles there is a fibromuscular tissue attaching testis attaching testis to the scrotal sac what is this called as it's called as Gubernaculum. It's called as gubernaculum. This and this. Can you think of a function of gubernaculum? I want you to be answering me. My <coughs> throat is bad. Okay. What would be the role of gubernaculum? Answer me. Yes, Aditi, my lovely girl. 
Yes, Adnan, I'm doing it. Don't worry. Madhu Bala Subramanyam. Seventh month, yes, descent of testis. Right, Shweta, you return it right. Bala holding testis in position. Attaching testis to scrotal wall. Yes, Sevak, but why? Adnan, I will declare it in a day or two, Bache. Yes, Harita. Yes, Abila. From where did I get such smart children? From where did I get such lovely kids? This is this structure, Bache, which is called as Guberniculum. This one, Guberniculum, is to position the testis properly in the scrotal sacs. Okay, see outside, if you see from outside, external genitalia, scrotum looks like one pouch. But inside, there are, in, internally, there is a partition here. Okay, and there are two scrotal sac, right scrotal sac and left scrotal sac. Okay, now, when the temperature is cold, when it is very cold, testis tends to go closer to the testis rises up closer to the abdomen to for thermoregulation one smart word you will remember thermoregulation for thermoregulation okay but testis should not it goes close to the abdomen but it should not get in the abdomen if testis is in the abdomen sperm will not be formed so these, this is the tissue, this is the tissue which keeps the testis positioned in the scrotal sacs internally because there are two sacs, okay, we call it scrotal sac, externally it looks like one pouch which we call scrotum, internally it's divided which is called as Two scrotal sacs. So, did we get it right, Bacha? Testis. So, now you know what is this fibro, fibrous tissue called as? It's called as guberniculum. It's called as guberniculum. Okay. Now, there is another thing. Shall I talk about it? Yes. You will add it in your NCRT thing. Okay. There are these muscles of scrotum. Muscles of scrotum. Okay. Called as Dartos muscles. Dartos muscles. Okay. Dartos muscles of scrotum. And because you are my very smart kids, I am giving you these names. Okay, there are muscles of testis, which are called as cremaster muscles. I am not getting, it's ER or OR, I don't remember it, but you just check it. Okay, cremaster muscles. So, I have given you two things. Okay, one, datos muscle, two, cremaster muscles. Are you getting it right? What is the muscle of scrotal, scrotum called as? Datos muscle. What is the muscle of testis around the testis called as? That is called as cremaster muscles. Okay. Just a second. It's very, very cold. It's so cold. It's so cold. Okay. Now, the muscles of the testis and the muscle of the scrotum why did I give you the name? These muscles, the contraction and relaxation of these muscles also help in the thermoregulation. Which is very important. Which is very important in your... Why? Because the temperature should be 2 to 2.5 degrees centigrade, 2 to 2.5 degrees centigrade lower than the body temperature. 
Did you, did you, are you making notes in your NCRT book? Okay, these all extra points will give you an edge over rest of the students. Okay, so datos muscle, cremester muscles, they all help in one thing. The temperature has to be 2 to 2.5 degrees centigrade lower than the body temperature. That's when the male will be fertile. Otherwise, if the temperature rises high, the male can become sterile. Okay, will not be able to produce gametes or sperms. Okay, so this is, this is this. Okay, moving ahead. Now, this is the testis, bache. Okay. Now, testis, oval in shape. This is testis. Now, I'll give you the details of this. Length, you, you will learn yourself. Length and width, please learn the figures yourself. 4 to 5 centimeter, 2 to 3 centimeter. Covered by the dense fibrous covering. Okay. Covered by the dense fibrous covering, which gives it the shape. Each testis has got around very important for underline it and put a star there. Okay, each testis has got 250, 250 lobule, lobules, testicular lobules. What is a lobule? I'm just going to be showing you. What is a lobule? I'll just show you. You just remember the number. How many lobules are there? There are 250 lobules in each testis. Okay, now each lobule each lobule contains one to three highly coiled structures which are called as sperm forming tubules. What is one word for that? Seminiferous tubules. Urine forming tubule, uriniferous tubule. Sperm forming tubules, seminiferous tubule. Got that right, Bache? So let's talk about this. <clears throat> I'm going to be doing it. I'm going to be explaining it to you here. Okay, I am going to be explaining lobules to you here. Now understand this with complete clarity. Okay, all of you, this slide is going to explain a lot of things which can be asked in your NEET exam. Just one side. That's it. We are not going to do much today. Okay, this one. Let's see this. Okay, now understand this, Bache. Okay, test this. Everybody with me? Just five minutes. Five minutes, we are done with it. Okay. Testis is surrounded by a dense fibrous layer. Okay. What is the dense? Dense fibrous means what is present? Collagen fibers. What is the name of that dense fibrous layer? Tunica albuginea. Tunica Albugenia. Okay. Is everybody saying that with Ritu ma'am? Tunica albugenia. Okay. Is the collagen fibers there which gives shape to the testis? Okay. So there is this collagen fibers dense layer which we call as what? Tunica albugenia. Okay. Now check this out, Bache. Tunica albuginea. Okay, this is tunica albuginea. Okay, this is tunica albuginea. Alright, now tunica, I'll, I'll draw it with the better color. Hold on. Okay, I will draw it with black color, Bache. Uh, so that you can see it properly. This is tunica albuginea. Okay. What is tunica albuginea made up of collagen fibers? Okay, now see this. Tunica albuginea pierces in the tissue of the testis. It pierces in the tissue of the testis forming partitions. You can see this? It is forming partitions like that. Okay, it forms partitions in the, tes in the testis. We call this partition what? Septa. Septa is partition. Okay. These partitions, they divide the whole testis into lobules. Okay. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. Here you can see these are what, bache? These are testicular 
lobules and what is the number how many lobules are there in each testis there are 250 lobules in each testis now you are understanding outside tunica albuginea it pierces inside in the form of partitions what are those partitions called as these partitions are called as septa septa now these partitions divide the entire testis into compartments different compartments what are those different compartments called as lobules here i have shown you just seven lobules okay so this is one lobule this is another lobule this is another lobule like that how many are there 250 now look at this each lobule each lobule has got these tubules one two some of them have got two this one has got only one some of them can have three also okay so each of these lobule each of this lobule has got one to three not written seminiferous tubules what is seminiferous tubule in the if see in the seminiferous tubule what is happening sperms are forming sperms are forming in the seminiferous tubules so let's quickly these are the lobules these are the lobules how many total lobules are there 250 in in each lobule in each lobule there are one to three seminiferous tubules got that right but check now all of these seminiferous tubules this is a seminiferous tubule this is a seminiferous tubule these are all the seminiferous tubules okay all of these seminiferous tubules see all of these okay they join together everybody listening to Ritu ma'am very carefully they join together in an irregular this irregular irregular network of tubules the seminiferous tubule they join together in an irregular <coughs> network of tubules what is that irregular network called rete testis rete means network rete means bache network okay that's called as rete testis okay now look at that from the rete testis this is you know this is how one by one you will understand the passage of sperm so beautifully where are the sperms forming sperms are forming in the seminiferous tubule from seminiferous tubule where did the sperm go to rete testis from rete testis 10 or 15 around 10 or 15 small ductules are taking the sperm okay what are these 10 15 small ductules called as they are called as vasa efferentia so sperms from rete testis will go to vasa efferentia vasa efferentia joins it joins the c shape or comma shape structure what is that c shape or what is this c shape or comma shape structure called as bache it is called as epididymis from vasa efferentia sperms transported to epididymis okay now epididymis has got three parts which head body and tail epididymis you don't have to do that kind of detailing but if you want to know epididymis this is the head this is the body this is the tail head body and tail from the tail region from the tail region arises a tube what is this tube which is going up from the behind it is going up what is it called as mass difference did you understand the passage of sperm okay let's see this now 
we have started sperms are made in seminiferestibule from the from the seminiferestibule these are seminiferestibule sperm pass into this irregular network what is this irregular network called rete testis that's why i've given you the numbers bache you can quickly 1 2 3 4 5 you should write the numbers okay from rete testis it goes to this 10 15 small ducts small duct efferentia okay vasa efferentia from the vasa efferentia it goes into the epididymis first head then body and then finally in the tail of epididymis sperms mature in epididymis sperms mature in epididymis from epididymis from the tail region of epididymis from behind see this what is arising from behind did you get it right bachche everybody did we get this structure right okay i'm asking you something let me see if you can answer me i would know the image is in front of you i'm asking you something okay uh name the structure everybody listening to ritu ma'am okay name the structure which joins rete testis to epididymis name the structure which joins rete testis to epididymis ansami abila gayatri kavita nice to have you bache bala yes crystal clear pratiksha yes harita yes la pintura corner <laughs> shri yes perfect 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 yes yes beautiful now you understood nice okay no this i'm not going to be do this is this is so important this is the ts of semini festival not today ritu ma'am is uh, i cannot just a second bachche okay okay hold on okay okay no all this i'm going to be doing that next time with you bachche no i'm just seeing if any question is there which i can ask you Okay yes there is a question which of the following depicts correct pathway of transport of sperms vasa efferentia and efferent ductule is the same thing question number 1 a b c or d madhu question number 1 bache a b c or d you have to write 1 a or 1 b or 1 c beautiful doremon you are there soham yes <coughs> purnani vash vashini very good very good very good it's you know this i just this is a neat question this is a neat question okay let's see next okay this also you should know vasa efferentia are the ductules leading from where to where read it yourself my my voice is <coughs> vasa efferentia question number 2 dinesh bala tanisha Gayatri, Priyadarshini, where are you? Priyadarshini, you join my lecture and then you go to sleep or what? John, yes, bache. Soam, Fatima, okay. From where? From where did I get such smart kids? Okay, no, this we have not done. We have not done. Okay, this you can do. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव अदर क्वेश्चन आई एल गिव यू टूमोरो डोंट वरी आई एल बी आस्किंग यू दोज क्वेश्चन ओके क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव द टेस्ट इन ह्यूम आर सिचुएटेड आउटसाइड द एबडोमिनल कैविटी इन साइड अ पाउच कॉल स्क्रॉटम द पर्पज इज फॉर वॉट क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव वॉट इज दिस इज दिस अ जोक एवरीथिंग यू थिंक इज बी ओनली आंसर एवरी क्वेश्चन यू आर आंसरिंग मी बी रितु मैम वन बी रितु मैम टू बी रितु मैम फाइव बी वॉट इज दिस it is b b is the answer to this is everybody giving me right answer <laughs> b b b kavita yes bachche it is b yes 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 it is b okay yeah that's that's it for today bachche and all of you who are new year please the pdf of this is available will be available by tomorrow on our telegram group please join the telegram group vdnt.in/neetelite vdnt.in/neetelite okay that's the group we have bachche and i want my heart now ritu ma'am is tired so i want my energy back and please like share with your friends but chill let everybody be here and subscribe the channel and all these hearts are spamming of hearts by ritu ma'am for all of you we are going to be continuing with the male reproductive system tomorrow which we will thank you so much that's lovely and yes i'm going to be holding a full mega menti of all the human physiology chapters of your 11th standard I will announce the date in a day or two, but I'll put it in Telegram. I'll tell you in the lecture also. We will definitely do it. Thank you so much. Aren't you hungry, all of you? Go eat something. Don't stay awake till very late in the night. Okay, so go eat something, study a little bit, and then rest. Thank you so much, Bache, and you know, Ritu Ma'am loves you completely. Good night. You take care.